Okay, hi everyone. I'm going to be talking about reduced order models for plasma physics and just giving a high level view of uh, where the work we've been doing recently fits into a broader understanding of plasma physics and the types of models you can use to approach it. This is mainly based off our uh, recent PRE paper and some of the more recent work we've been doing. Uh, I encourage you to check out our, our GitHub re repo at PyCindy, um, which is this open source package we're building to incorporate many of these new techniques. So uh, I want to revisit the plasma hierarchy that we're, if you're a plasma physicist, you're, you're used to. Um, basically, if you uh, really go from a first principles um, setting, you, you start with the Tlamantovich equations, which evolves sort of uh, every particle in the system and is, is sort of a prototypical example of, the, of these white box models, which requires a high level of, of theoretical modeling and basically no experimental modeling or data. Uh, so it's, it's pure first principles, um, but of course we don't use these equations because they're, they're computationally inefficient. So it would be extremely hard to, to evolve the f uh, you know, full Tlamantovich equations or full even full kinetics uh, for many of the plasma devices that, that exist today. Uh, but those, those are great examples of these, uh, what we call white box models, which uh, are these very first principles types of models. Uh, of course, we know there's a spectrum of models in plasma physics, uh, going from Tlamantovich to kinetics to variants of MHD. Uh, and then we have these uh, far extreme black box models, which uh, basically are, uh, require no theoretical modeling, um, but require uh, huge amounts of data to synthesize and perform useful tasks. Um, so uh, just to give you a little bit more here, uh, so, so as I said, you start sort of down here with Klamantovich equations, uh, you go through kinetics, variants of MHD, all the way to these deep learning surrogate models, and um, there's sort of a notable gap here between the MHD variants and these fully, uh, full machine learning models that don't use any physics whatsoever. Uh, so basically, we're gonna be looking for how can we uh, fill in this gap in the, mo in the plasma hierarchy and uh, sort of build in some physics constraints uh, into these, the machine learning methods that we're going to use to do this. So uh, to motivate this a bit, uh, I'm just going to talk real quick about how reduced order models can be used for control. So uh, you have some, some di plasma device here, I've taken an image of D3D. You have some uh, control that's going in and uh, actuating the plasma somehow. You imagine you have uh, an ideal scenario, the full state measurements Q. And uh, what you would love to do is uh, feed this back in, uh, in a closed loop where you take your full state measurements Q, you uh, evolve them according to the full model of how, these state, uh, how the state is evolving in time, and uh, you have some reference Z for how you want Q to look, to look like. And uh, this, this closed loop MPC controller can drive Q to Z uh, as you close it back in this loop and change your control uh, to, to actuate the plasma. So that's what you would love to do. Of course, uh, we, we don't typically have full state measurements um, because that's extremely difficult, especially in these uh, fusion plasmas. And we also uh, can't evolve these full models because this might be full kinetics and uh, trying to evolve full kinetics in real time on a very complicated 3D geometry uh, is just not tractable. Uh, so what we, we do instead is we, we uh, instead use a surrogate MPC controller. So instead of taking the full state measurements, we now take some subset of the measurements. In this case, we, we're imagining we're doing the proper orthogonal decomposition and using the modes that you get from that. Um, but that's, that's sort of beyond the point here. Uh, basically, the point is you now have some subset of the measurements. Again, you have some reference for how you want them to look like. And now you have some surrogate model for how that subset of measurements is evolving. In this case, we're going to use the Galerkin models, but uh, this can also be like a, a full black box neural network if you like. Um, and then you play the same game. You, clo you close this in a, a closed loop and change the, uh, the inputs to the plant at, and this thing drives your uh, system to Z. So that's, that's the game we would like to play and um, we need uh, to find theoretical connections between these full models and these surrogate models uh, so that uh, we can have certain guarantees and understanding of what's going on in the surrogate models, 
but at the same time you be able to have these surrogate models so that we can compute things fast enough uh, to do real-time control on plasma devices. So um, one of the things you might do to find these surrogate models is just take uh, a big a bunch of measurements from an experimental device and then use system identification methods to figure out how, are, how is that data evolving in time by building a, a system of ODEs or PDEs uh, for how that data is evolving. So uh, we're going to use this, I'm going to show you how the sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics or CINDY method uh, works. Uh, I encourage you to look at uh, Steve Brunton's videos uh, because he, he did sort of the originator and describes this in, in a lot more detail. But basically the idea is you have some system, so here we have the, the Lorenz attractor. Uh, we take some, da some data, we, we basically measure this at a bunch of points, and, um, and then what we do is we build, so, so we've taken some measurements uh, which are in this x dot, and then we, we build some candidate library of possible terms that could be on the right hand side here and uh, use sparse regression to figure out, okay, what should this right-hand side be? Uh, and that will give us a system of ODEs or PDEs for how our measurements are evolving. In the, in the case of Lorenz, uh, what we can imagine is we build some big library where it's constant, linear, and all the way up to um, quintic uh, polynomial terms in X, Y, and Z. Uh, so this thing is getting combinatorically big. And then this matrix here is just uh, picking out how strong, ba basically the coefficients of each of these terms, which is telling you how strong are each of these terms in this system of ODEs. Uh, so this, this is combinatorically big, and the way we could solve this is by using sparse regression methods. Uh, so basically we, we say, give me the best set of coefficients that both minimizes the error in the system of ODEs with the data, uh, but at the same time, we're trying to minimize the norm of the coefficient matrix. Uh, so basically, this is going to give us as few non-zero terms in this matrix as possible. And that's really nice because it's going to give us a parsimonious model uh, that doesn't have a million terms in everything uh, and can sort of uh, be a, a little bit more interpretable, a little more stable, and be able to solve uh, in efficiently this, this uh, regression problem despite the fact that theta uh, this matrix can be sort of combinatorically large depending on how big you make this library of candidate terms. So that's how it works. Uh, again, if, if you need more details here, I don't blame you, but uh, this has been covered in many other, uh, other videos, so please take a look at Steve Brunton's uh, um, channel on YouTube. And then I just want to point out you can also uh, take this process and constrain the optimization problem further uh, with conservation laws. And this is really nice uh, for MHD because MHD and especially Hall MHD have a lot of useful conservation laws that you can build in uh, and, and go beyond just uh, getting sort of physics agnostic uh, models from data, but actually build some of the physics into these data-driven models in the first place. And that's, that's really nice for filling out this hierarchy I've been describing. Um, so what I'm just going to show you here is, is the, the benefit you get from building in these constraints that I've mentioned. Uh, so this is basically, an a so I'm going to show you an example of uh, this, the quality of these Cindy models on an example plasma. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change how sparse the model is, this lambda, uh, on the y-axis. And then I'm going to uh, change how big the, the s resulting Cindy model is on the x-axis. So uh, models out here are like uh, 12D coupled nonlinear systems of ODEs. Uh, and basically the main takeaway here is that um, when you do these sorts of scans, you find that there's three main regions that you get. Uh, region one are these unstable regions where uh, if you're looking at the sort of the subspace of just the first three modes, uh, you, get these, you can get these unstable um, divergent trajectories where it sort of starts on the right path and then it diverges off after a little bit. And what's happening here is uh, basically these are when the model sparsity or lambda is so low that uh, the model is overfitting to the noisy data and giving you diverging trajectories because it's, it's overfitting to the system. Uh, then we have this nice uh, stable region 2 which actually gives you the correct dynamics and is uh, Staying, staying nice and not diverging in finite time. 
And then we have this region three where basically you've turned up the model sparsity so high that it's uh, basically cutting off the primary dynamics of the system and you're, you're no longer um, capturing the dynamics, you're sort of killing everything off with this promotion. Uh, what I want to, uh, again, so I, sh I should have mentioned that these uh, color bars here you're seeing are, is the Frobenius error in the, um, in the uh, evolution of the, si of the measurements and the same thing for the x, x dot, so the, the DDT of the, the measurements that you're taking. So we're, we're comparing between the true and the predicted uh, um, uh, trajectories here. And then I just want to show you what it looks like when you actually constrain these things. So this constrained uh, Cindy landscapes, uh, now what I'm showing you is uh, these, these models where I've built in uh, global conservation of energy. And now uh, what you see is this region one of instability uh, vanishes and you have this nice larger region of stable models that you can use uh, and, and be confident they're not um, diverging in finite time. So this, this is really nice. Uh, we can use these uh, hybrid models where you're sort of building in some physics constraints, but uh, letting the data guide you about how, how it's evolving in time. Uh, and we can use these models to fill in these, uh, these rungs that uh, I mentioned in the plasma hierarchy. So we're excited about this. Uh, we hope that uh, folks keep working in this direction. And uh, I appreciate you watching today. So thanks a lot.